Hi, today we're going to talk about the experiment that gave us the chemicals necessary to make this, this, and all of this goodness. Sorry, I'm kidding, but we are going to talk about what is, at least in my opinion, a more important experiment that is necessary and that in fact gave the basis for the entire field of genetic engineering without which perhaps the GMO components of such chocolate might not have been possible. I'm not sure. So, yeah, I guess to some extent it did create all of this. <laughs> I hope by the end of this lesson, you're able to understand and appreciate this silly meme I made. All right, so let's get started. Since the 1800s, uh, scientists were convinced that the chromosomes inside a cell, that is, the genetic molecules inside the nucleus of this green cell I've drawn, uh, these ones over here, they stored the um, molecules necessary for heredity. Heredity is a concise way of saying that um, how, a, you know, what traits are passed on from one organism to another. So the sort of physical characteristics or even mental characteristics that are passed on due to genetic information. Let's say um, you inherited a gene for being tall from your mother or father or parent. Then that sort of inheritance uh, is hereditary. And so this concept is called heredity if it's linked to the genetic in information. Alright, so they knew that heredity was chemical in nature. It was stored in chemicals, as a lot of stuff is in biology. Uh, and they knew it was from the chromosomes, and they also knew uh, a lot of stuff. And, and they knew that these things over here, these spherical objects, are globular histone proteins. Keyword being proteins. So the chromosome is made up of these globular histone proteins and this thing, which I'm sure looks familiar, it's DNA. So they thought that the genetic information responsible for heredity is either stored in nucleic acids like DNA or in proteins. And at the time, the leading hypothesis, at least in the early 20th century, was actually that it's stored in proteins. Uh, if you've studied proteins previously, you might recall that proteins are basically these polymers or these long chains of individual monomers, units, called amino acids. And there are 20 fundamental, or rather 20 common amino acids, which are shown over here. Now, proteins were favored as the contender for genetic, for storing genetic information because they had so many, 20 different possible, uh, you know, fundamental units. So you could bring out a lot more variety in a shorter sequence. Whereas in DNA, as you might know, there are only four possible bases, A, T, G, C, over here you can see them, that you can vary. The rest is this fixed structure of a sugar phosphate backbone. And so they thought that it would be more efficient for nature to store information in proteins. So to answer this question and settle the debate and either prove or disprove this hypothesis, in the 1950s, there were two scientists, uh, Alfred Hershey, and I tried so hard to find out whether um, Mr. Hershey was linked to the Hershey chocolate, but I even looked at family trees, I couldn't find anything. If you find anything, please let me know. And Martha Chase. These two scientists, they exploited a particular feature about proteins and amino acids. Uh, this feature was that amino acids are made of the elements, CHONs, as I like to remember, an acronym. That's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur in these two over here, shown in yellow. Whereas DNA, as you might know, is made up of CHOMP, <laughs> uh, sort of like CHOMP wherein, again, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and in this case, phosphorus, which 
you can see here so given that they were they had these different elements in them the uh, researchers decided to exploit this difference in order to identify whether DNA was the genetic material of the cell. Now the sulfur we find on earth around 95% uh, of it is in the form of 32S or S32 in which basically the sulfur atoms have 32 nucleons inside the nucleus of the atom not the cell and I'm not going to draw all 32 but they're basically neutrons and protons and around the nucleus are of course the electrons so there are 32 of these nucleons subatomic particles inside the nucleus and um, for phosphorus the most common approximately 100% of it on earth is in the form of 31p 1 before s32 um, and that has of course 31 nucleons inside the nucleus and what Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase did is they used something called radioisotopes radioisotopes <laughs> of these two elements uh, so they used S35 and P32 which as you can see had more nucleons than the originals and this made them unstable so they decayed over time releasing radiation that could be detected because these two were radioactive they could be used as indicators so if a molecule was radioactive uh, as in we detected radiation coming from it it contained either of these at least in their experiment so Hershey and Chase decided to use two mediums one containing the isotope S35 one containing P32 and they grew something called a T2 bacteriophage inside it and uh, it was quite tough for me to remember this but ultimately what worked for me was remembering T2 is just the type of virus and a bacteriophage is a virus for bacteria they chose this of course because it would not infect humans and because of its simple structure so shown here if you grew me in an environment containing a lot of snickers and then scan my body the next day you'd probably find a lot of the particles uh, or chemicals that are found within snickers in my body and if you grew me in an environment containing carrots you'd probably find a lot of vitamin a in my body the next day and yes i did compare snickers to carrots i really like them both uh, but anyways, my point is that, uh, you know, I, I will absorb the nutrients that uh, are found in my environment. Based on this principle, Hershey and Chase grew half of the bacteria in a medium containing the phosphorus isotope and the other half in a medium containing the sulfur isotope. The structure of the virus is such that its outside is a coat called a capsid that's made of proteins and the inside is made of DNA the capsid protects the DNA and if you remember the DNA would contain Sean's and the capsid would contain Sean oops I messed that up sorry John and this would contain John's and so when they grew the bacteriophage in the sulfur environment the capsid or the protein coat became radioactive and the in this environment the dna became radioactive 